for this boat tour. I hope you will allow me to indulge in my Royal Navy heritage by quickly showing you around HMS Sabre, a Skimitar class fast patrol boat that is based in Portsmouth. I joined the Royal Navy aged 16 years old and served aboard HMS Sheffield which was a Type 22 frigate HMS Invincible, which was a Royal Navy aircraft carrier and HMS Norfolk, a Type 23 frigate. I was also lucky enough to spend a short bit of time aboard the US Navy frigate, the USS Clackring. I've never been aboard a Skimmers class patrol boat so it's great to be given the opportunity to jump aboard during the 2021 Southampton Boat Show. Starting off on the port aft quarter, we have Fred, or Fred Overboard as he is lovingly referred to in the Royal Navy. Fred, bless him, is used throughout the fleet for man overboard drills and most surface vessels will have a Fred amongst the ship's company. To the right we have a locker for the sea survival suits and to the left of Fred is a mount for a general purpose machine gun. And then of course we have the two SA-80s. The bright yellow device that you can see just to the left of Fred is an EPIRB that is tethered to one of the life rafts. This fast patrol boat has a displacement of 24 tonnes and is 16 metres length overall. She has a top speed of over 32 knots. On the radar mast we have a navigation radar. Below that on the port and starboard side are two large spotlights. In the centre of the picture is a tannoy and to the port and starboard side of that are two additional lights for the deck. You might be wondering why HMS Sabre only has one radar, but remember she has been designed and built for inshore duties rather than for offshore taskings. This manual davit is used for recovering casualties from the sea, so Fred Overboard will get to see this piece of equipment in action on a regular basis. HMS Sabre was built in 1993 so she is nearly 30 years old and has seen a lot of action. The Royal Navy will shortly be replacing the Skimitar class of fast patrol boats with this beauty that will have a top speed of around 40 knots. Join me as we head inside HMS Sabre. On the starboard side we have the navigator station. The radar screen is on the left of the dashboard and the digital charts are being displayed on a laptop. Aft of the navigator's chair is another table that could be used for traditional charts. Up here we have some cap badges. Now I could be wrong but they are probably gifts from shipmates who have visited HMS Sabre. I am sure my former shipmates will let me know in the comments section. And here we have the helm station in all of her analog glory. If you are a fan of the non-digital age, then this helm station is for you. Just check out all of those dials and switches. So here we have the traditional compass, as well as a rudder angle indicator in the center of the console. To the port and starboard side of that, we have the engine RPM indicators. Amongst all that analogue glory, we do have some gems of modern technology. What the hell is that white thing I hear you yell? No, it's not some archaic communications tool that can be used to communicate with the engineer down in the musty engine room. Instead, it is a blower. 
I would say for the air conditioning, but I don't think HMS Sabre has any. Still, it is nice to get some air blowing in your face, regardless of whether or not it is air from an air conditioning unit. I think that this is Fred Overboard's girlfriend and maybe they'd had an argument which is why she was in the helm station and he was out on the cockpit. Okay so now we've finished having a nosy around in here, why don't we head back out onto the upper deck. As we walk along the starboard side, you'll notice on the left there is a boat hook which is really conveniently placed. The green material on the deck is a non-slip surface. On the bow or forecastle, we have the windlass as well as two small bollards and notice also how the guard rail can be unclipped. Here we have an escape hatch in the centre of the sloping superstructure. Notice also the forward raking windows, which not only help to prevent glare, but also help to keep surface water on the windows to a minimum when beating through those big waves. Notice also how HMS Sabre has a radar reflector atop of the radar. When vessels such as HMS Sabre are operating as part of larger task groups such as carrier groups, then they're going to want to make sure they can be seen on radars, which is why they have that additional radar reflection. So that completes our quick tour of HMS Sabre. Unfortunately I wasn't allowed to film in the engine room or below deck for security reasons which is understandable. I wanted to say a quick thank you to the MOD and Royal Navy for allowing me to film aboard this vessel and of course also wanted to thank my former shipmates for having me on board. I also want to say thank you to Fred Overboard for having me on board. I retired from the Royal Navy back in 2001 so it's been a long time since I've seen him and it's great to see that he is still serving and looking so well. Keep smiling shippers. Of course, as my regular viewers will already know, the helm station in any boat is one of my favourite places. I love modern technology, but at the same time, it's nice to be able to see how things were before everything went touchscreen. I also love how many grab rails there are in here. After all, the Royal Navy doesn't stop operating when the sea state gets rough, so these things can save you from having a bit of a fall. Another favourite part of this boat for me is the Sea Survival Suit Lockers. As well as serving in the Royal Navy, I also served in the RNLI for a couple of years, so I am passionate about this sort of thing. Something so simple really can save your life if the worst happens. So that was HMS Sabre. What do you think of her? Let me know in the comments section below. 
I always wanted to say a big thank you to Lieutenant Clouter, the CEO of HMS Sabre, for phoning up the MOD's press office to make sure that I could film on board with my GoPro. I appreciate the time that it took to do that, so thank you. Uh, before you go, please don't forget to give the video a like and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you are interested in becoming a member of my channel, I'll put a link up now so you can find out a little bit more about that. So again, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.